our study this afternoon is going to be a continuation of exposition on the book of Ezekiel. Today we are going to deal with chapter 7, the last part of chapter 7, that is chapter, uh, sorry, the last part of chapter 7, that is verse 27, whereby it says, the king shall move, and the prince shall be clothed with desolation. And the hearts of the people of the land shall be troubled. I'll do unto them after their way, and according to their deserts will I judge them. And they shall know that I am the Lord. So here we are going to see uh, how the kings or the rulers of a nation, you know, when we say kings, sometimes when we talk about the church or the destruction of the nation of Israel, of the church of Israel, which was in Jerusalem, which is about to be destroyed in this book of Ezekiel. Sometimes we don't uh, talk of the rulers of that country or the kings. But in this church, we are going to see the kings, how the kings are affected when the church goes wrong. Because sometimes we might say that those who are the leaders of a nation, because they are very rich or they have a lot of wealth, then they don't feel the calamities which affect that nation. That may seem to us in appearance, but in actual sense, they also will suffer or must suffer when the church enters into suffering. When we go a little bit uh, to, back to verse 26, it says, Mischief shall come after mischief. We saw that. And rumors shall be upon rumor. Then shall they seek a vision of the prophet. But the Lord shall perish from the priest and counsel from the ancients. We saw even how kings, even how, how Zedekiah wanted to hear things from who? From Yanni, Yanni, sorry, how the king, Zedekiah, wanted to hear things from Jeremiah. The same king had, had put Jeremiah in prison, and at the same time, he wanted to hear what Jeremiah will say. If you go back to 24, verse 24, it says, Wherefore will I bring the worst of the heathen, and they shall possess their houses? I will also make the pomp of the strong to cease. The pomp of the strong to cease. Those are the kings. And their holy places shall be defiled. Those are the priests. So in a nation, we have two categories of people. We have the, the, uh, the rulers of our nations, uh, political rulers or leaders, and we have the priests, that is the church, those who lead the church. So people have never known that the church is the soul of a nation, is the life of that nation. So once the church is degenerated, when we say degenerated, when the church loses the gospel, the, then it affects both political and ecclesiastical uh, settings in a, in a nation. So we are going to see in this sense, or in this verse, how the king and princess 
the affair in the country when the church go wrong. Let us not think that it is only the, yani, the leaders of the church that will suffer, even those who lead the nation. Political leaders serve us together with those who are in the church. So the verse goes to say, the king shall mourn. The king shall mourn. So here, it is mourning with a sign. That is, uh, as we saw with Zedekiah. Zedekiah had cause of constant mourning, even to his death. Why? He lost the kingdom, his sons, and his eyes at once, which were dear things unto him. You see now, Zedekiah lost everything, even his eyes, his wife, his children. They were, all, they were all killed to the point that he lost everything, even his eyes. That is Zedekiah. And you can remember, if you go back uh, to our last expositions, you go to Jeremiah 38 4. What does it say? Let us see a little bit so that we may understand what we are talking about. You can see verse 4. What does it say in Swahili? So in the same, Dipo waku wakamuambi and farme to a kuomba unto who you awawe wakua aido fisha mikonaya watua vita wario baki katika mjihu na mikono ya watu wate wakuambia maneno kama hayo mana unto who you awa tafuti watu hawa. Heri, bari, shari. You see, therefore, the princess, those are the leaders who work together with the king. You know, it's like a country where the, there's a president and CSs or whatever, or governors. Those people who are under the president. Now, this princess, they were the, those who govern together with the king, who used to govern together with the king. And to them, all of them who are the leaders of that nation, that's the nation of Israel, they were against Jeremiah. That's why they are saying, therefore the princess, the princess said unto the king, we beseech thee, let this man be put to death. For thus we, he weakeneth the hands of the men of war that remain in this city and the hand of all the people in speaking such words unto them. Which words were, were, was Jeremiah speaking? You see, the princess, because of misguided, or we can say, misconception of the word of God, or reasoning, in reasoning, you will find that they were against Jeremiah. And at the same time, Jeremiah was the one who was to help, who could help that nation? He, had, he was a man of God. He could see everything. Even there's a time he told Zedekiah, what Nebuchadnezzar, what Nebuchadnezzar is going to tell you, do, otherwise you'll die. Do it because you'll die. But you'll find that the leaders were against Jeremiah. They are telling him, put him to death. You saw even uh, even Jeremiah went to feast him in, in prison. And even in verse 5 he said, uh, Then Zedekiah the king said, Behold, he is in your hand. For the king is not he that can do anything against you. You see now, Nukumanisha, He has given Jeremiah unto the princess. Nini, fanyani vile munafanya nini? Munataka. So I want you to see or I want us to see that in a country, those who are in the greatest darkness of the king, in the kingdom of God are the leaders. Leaders, 
because of their self of the self love because of self because they want to serve to have everything the best the pomp of a nation they have yani they are married to worldly riches when you come to the kingdom of god they are the most they are those who are in the biggest darkness but when you look with the eyes of men you might think that the leaders are those who can see no they don't see if they could understand the word of god they could not have colluded with yani with zedekiah they would have known that yani jeremiah is a man of who is a man of god and they would have advised the king but now you can see they are even the one telling him to do what so when you see a leader in a nation failing when a leader in a nation make any make decisions which don't favor the nation it is not him alone it is those who are around him the leaders those who are surround the king they are in darkness but, but but because the king do not understand he is a leader in this world he is using worldly wisdom not heavenly wisdom so this worldly wisdom it is as if it is nothing when you come to the wisdom of god and many will think that a leader can make a, yani the right decision when it comes to a nation so when the priest fail to advise the political leaders then that nation is full of darkness and nobody can help those leaders and that's why you see these people they are even against the only light which was in that nation which was jeremiah they were against that light meaning the leaders of this world they go always against the light of god that's why people have never known leaders kill they murder in the name of leadership they corrupt they are above the law and people don't know that leaders being above the law that means they are even putting themselves above who above god so if you can put yourself above god that means are you with god or against god you are against god that's what people should know because if you are not above god if you are leading a people in a nation in the fear of god you would be the first to adhere to the law when you go in wa kwanza kuoneshana watu to show people how the law must be kept wewe ndio ukikuwa kiongozi unaonesha watu vile natakiwa haungetaka any corruption even you could be against anybody even the magistrates who can corrupt the law because of the fear of god but when you see leaders as we see in this and present generations leaders being above the law and those leaders they are happy because they are above the law because they have money and they can, they can corrupt the law or what they should know that they are the first number one they are those people who are who are against god they are against their maker they are against god no matter who they are they think because they have money they can do everything so you can see zedekiah here with the princess they had all the power to silence jeremiah yes they did it but what happened to that nation it was destroyed it was destroyed so the word of jeremiah came to stand but the word of king zedekiah with his, with his princess lost everything they lost everything even zedekiah lost everything even those princesses but the word of zedekiah stood because it was the word of god and that's why even to today we learn about jeremiah with those king so that we can understand and see these things in in their true perspective because that's what god 
is doing with his uh, servant. So, he goes on to say, this king shall be clothed with desolation. We have seen it. That is verse 27. The king shall, shall mourn and the princess shall be clothed with desolations. You see, they shall be clothed with desolations. So, when the people I want us to see you know, he had clothed is a garment. A garment is to put, we put a garment for protections. Either from the cold, but here you can see, they shall be clothed with desolation. They are king. So it means, instead of that peace that we look upon leaders having outwardly. But there comes a time they'll be clothed with desolation. You cannot imagine when people say that the leader, the king, shall be clothed with desolation. Because we see them as very important people, above the law, they have everything. So when you, you talk about suffering, Sometimes people wonder, how can a king suffer? Because we see it, they are above the law, they have money, they can go to the best hospital, they can corrupt the law, they can do anything which they want. If you are against them, you can even die. So what do you mean when we say desolations? We are going to see them one by one. So the hands of the people of the land shall be trampled. That's what the verse goes on to say. The hands of the people. So when the people should see their king mourning, their nobles desolate, no heart, no heart or spirit in them for the church and state, for their liberties or lives, their, heart and, their hearts and hearts were troubled. So what does that mean? You know, when a leader in a nation, when a leader in a nation like ours, they fail, they fail the people that there is problem everywhere. That people cannot make their own, their, their, their heads to meet. That the leader cannot promise things which are helpful to these people. All what they promise doesn't come to bear fruit. The, the leaders, they weaken the hands of the people. That's what they don't know. They weaken the hands of the people. Meaning, what what I because you work every day, you are working hard, and yet you are having nothing. So when you work and you are not getting things to work out for your life, what is remaining for you is a deep despair. So leaders, that's why you see, when leaders make the right decision, they encourage the people and they give them power to work. They feel the nation or their, or, or their nations, the driver is in control, is in control. But when the driver, the leader, they fail, they weaken the hands of the people. They weaken the hands of the people. And that's not only now when we talk about the leaders the, the, the work which we do with our own hands. Even when we talk about the truth in the kingdom of God. The leaders, those are the priests, the pastors. When they fail in truth, they don't teach truth. They teach half-baked truth. 
which has no power in their mind to make them be born again, then all what happens, that yani, they, bring, yani, they bring up a generation with a weakened mind whereby each and every person they become ignorant of the truth. And that's why you see why, what is happening in this uh, present generation. We have so many churches, so many leaders who call themselves church leaders, but we have church whereby truth is not regarded. Nobody cares about truth. Nobody wants to study about the truth. Their, their, their hands, that is their mind, is weakened. They don't care. The same case, the, the same case happened with a nation, with the leaders of the, of the political leaders. If they keep on failing, they weaken the hands of people. People don't work. Sasa. Then uh, it goes on to say, "I'll do unto them after their way." I'll do unto them after their way and according to their desert will I judge them. What does that mean? I'll do it according to their own way. Is that what they want? What do they want? What these people do they want? What are they after? What are they after? The church of Israel was the kingdom of God. It represented the house of God. And God wanted to be seen working in that nation. And that's why you find that this nation, when the gospel or the word of God or the law was in that nation, it was under the protection of God. And these people, they had everything, even outward riches. They had everything. If you read the church history, you will see. But then, the leaders of that nation, instead of following the true prophet of God, they followed the false prophet. You can remember Jeroboam, who separated from the two tribes and formed the northern kingdom of Israel. He came even to the point of refusing people from the, from the northern Israel to go and worship in Jerusalem. And Jerusalem was the only place where God had said the, yeah, 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 where God was dwelling and where he was to be worshipped. But Jeroboam refused them to come there. Instead of appointing the Levite to serve he appointed any person who wanted to serve in those two temples which he had built at one at Dan, the other one at Bethel. That was a key. So here you can see the problem of the nation of Israel also was very much uh, contributed by the kings, the leaders. Because the leaders because of wanting to have worldly wealth, a corrupt leader cannot seek advice to the true prophets of God. He'll always go to the false. He'll always go to the false. Why will he go to the false prophets? You can see it in Jeremiah. Sorry, sorry, in, uh, in, 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 in uh, Rehoboam. Yeah, sorry, Jeroboam. You can see it. He chose all the false prophets to serve him. Even when the, the true prophet wanted to come and advise, those false tro yeah, prophets were against those true prophets. You can see it. If you read it in the church history, you, you'll get it. You see now, again now here in Jerusalem, the two tribes, that was ten tribes. You can see now the same thing happening with Zedekiah. Zedekiah 
is again is the true prophet. Not that there were no false prophets. There were many false prophets. Those people who are saying this man is, is uh, prophesying bad things to this nation, the princess, they had other prophets who are prophesying good things. Telling those kings and princes, no, it cannot happen. Jeremiah is wrong. And that's why they were against Jeremiah. Jeremiah. So you can see the scenario here. What, are, what God wants us to see. That king in a nation or the leaders or presidents for that matter, they will always work with the false prophet. Not the good or those prophets who are sent by God. Because one thing, the king is corrupt and he wants to be supported in that corruption. He wants somebody who is not going to accuse him of what he is doing. The priest or the pastor or the false prophet want someone who is going to help him with what he wants. But not the truth. So he'll keep quiet. The, he'll not tell the truth. And the king will be happy with that false prophet. So the false prophet will benefit with money. Because he wants money. He wants he want worldly wealth. And the king will benefit with the lies of this false prophet. Because the, the false prophet is not accusing him. He's not convicting him. He want to be supported. That's what happens. If you look at even in this generation, that is what is happening. Sasawa. So when God says, they'll be judged according to their ways, according to their deserts. Which are the deserts of the king? That is one according to their judgments. How do they judge things? One, they have made ill judgment of persons and things and deserve God's judgment for them. And as God deals with them. That means they have made judgments according to their own understanding. They have made ill judgment of persons and things. They don't judge righteously. They want even the corrupt to be set free, so long as they are on their side. They want the righteous to be put into jail because they are against their deals. That's how these people are. That's how the nation of Israel was. It was a church, and that's how the kings and the priests were working. The kings wanted the righteous to be put in prison. Sasawa. And those who are corrupt to be set free. That was the way it was. So, what was God? Why was God against them? God said. They have oppressed. They, sh yani, they shall be oppressed. They have not heard the cry of others. They shall not be heard crying. Because that's what all what ha what's happened or happened to the kings or the leaders. They have oppressed. They, they were oppressing the poor. You know. When you are given a seat as a leader in a nation, you just take it lightly. But the responsibility which you have been given by God, it's a high responsibility if you do it in the right way. But if you come to a point whereby, as God is saying how these people were, that they have oppressed they shall be oppressed. They have not heard the cry of others. They shall not be heard crying also. 
That means when people are crying because of the economy, they, that they cannot have their heads meet, and there is a government in place, it means these leaders are not hearkening to the cry of its citizen. So that is, in, the, in God's eyes, that is oppression. They are oppressing. They have killed and they shall be killed. So most of the leaders during that time, if you read the nation of Israel, there were murders after murders. That's why he's saying they have killed. They, they also shall be killed. They have spoiled and they shall be spoiled. So all these things happens to the leaders of a nation. And this is what happened to that leaders who are then who are there in the time of Jeremiah in the kingdom of Israel. So, what do we learn from this? What do we learn from this? Or how can we help leaders? Or what, how can, what can lead, how, what are supposed to be learned by the leaders? In order for them not to, because these are things that happens so often and is happening and it's not going to stop because of lack of knowledge when you become a leader in this world. One thing we should know that God has times for kings and courtiers to mourning. That when people are in power, when they are leaders, they should know that they have, God has set a time for them to mourn in. No matter how oppressive a leader you are, just because you are in power or you think you are at your utopia, there is a time which will come, which God has put in place for you to mourn. You know, some people will say, how and yet we only serve, let's say, if you go to the present generation, most of the countries, they have the time limit of a king serving for some time. Then he goes. Then there'll be argument that if I serve for a certain time and then I go, how will, how will then God make me move? How will he make me mourn? And yet I have gone. What he, what he does, when you go, all what you have done, you might not yani, feel it at your time, but your generation, you, are, you will leave a curse unto your generation. There will come a time that these people will suffer because of you. You might not be there. You might have gone out of this world, but you will pay. If you go to church history, you will see how most of the children in the nation of Israel suffered because of their fathers. Your father was a king, he did bad. Then after, even 50 years, you find that the whole house is being persecuted. There comes, it was, they are, yani, they are receiving what you did. You might not receive it, but they receive it. If people read the word of God, they'll see it very clearly. And if we shall have time, I'll show you how people suffer. So, Greatness except not from God's hand. 
Greatness except not from God's hand. If great ones sin, they shall smart for their sins. That's why God says, the king shall mourn. That's the word of God. The king shall mourn. Why do they not feel it? It is because when they are king, they choose false prophet to advise them. That's why they don't know that one day they'll mourn. And that's why they keep on sinning, they oppress, and they don't care. But they don't know they are oppressing their children. They don't know. They think that they're just going to leave and that's all. Things will be over. No. There will come a time they'll know. Their children will know our father. For those who will be in the house of God will know. But not the wicked. The wicked is just things. It's just calamities which are happening. Are happening. So we can see for example Zedekiah's sins were great. One, first he was false. Alikuwa muongo. As a things too incident to kings. Let us read it in 2 Chronicle 36, 13. This is Zedekiah. And 12 it says, And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord his God. And he humbled not himself before Jeremiah, the prophet, speaking from the mouth of God. I want you to get that. He even humbled not himself before Jeremiah. He chose to deal with the false prophet instead of the prophet of God. That he. And he also rebelled against King Nebuchadnezzar, who had, who had made him swear by God. But he stiffened his neck and he hardened his heart from turning unto the Lord, God of Israel. You know, Zedekiah, he was, when, when Nebuchadnezzar came in the first time in Jerusalem, when he, he took Hezekiah, not Hezekiah, when he, he took Joachim, he made, he chose Zedekiah. He told him, I'm going to make you I'm not going to take this country now. I'm going to make you a leader, but you must be under my charge. You must answer everything. You must be, yani you must be under me. He accepted. He accepted the offer to lead the nation of Israel on behalf of who? Nebuchadnezzar. But then, afterward, when he went to Jeremiah, Jeremiah told him that Jeremiah had told him, when Zedekiah, when Nebuchadnezzar come, don't rebel. Accept everything that he's going to tell you. But when Nebuchadnezzar came, Zedekiah listened unto the false prophet. Afterward, when Zedekiah, when Nebuchadnezzar had gone, they rebelled. Again, is Jeremiah. He hearkened at the false prophet. And that's why you see, he was, he, all his house was wiped. And even why his eyes were taken out by Nebuchadnezzar. Not that, not that Nebuchadnezzar wanted to do it, but he forced it himself. Not hearkening on the word of God. That's why, that's why it, was, it happened yani, that way. So that's why we say he violated the oath he had taken. He violated the oath he had taken. So when, when we say he violated the oath which he had taken, what does that mean? Who had made Zedekiah the king? It is Nebuchadnezzar? <clears throat> it is because Nebuchadnezzar when he came, he takes the sitting president and he tell you, you are now going to be the king. So he took an oath. An oath. So it, is, it was an oath that he is going to lead the people under who? Nebuchadnezzar. 
So he took an oath and then he rebelled against that oath. That's why he suffered what he suffered. When a king takes an oath, when you say you are going to do this, and you go against that oath, you suffer because of that oath. That's why many leaders don't understand. You suffer because of just that oath that you have made. It will make you su suffer because you, you are a lying king. You lie. And those lies will, be, will, be, will be caught up with you because you lie. Why do you lie? People don't know. King should not lie. What was the problem with this king? Moreover, Ukeda 14, it says, uh, the temple worship, what, heathenship idolatry was practiced in his days. The temple worship of it were polluted. You, you, if you go to us, for tea, you will see it. Moreover, all the chief of the priests and the people transgressed very much after all abomination of the heathen. So you can see the problem with Zedekiah. Zedekiah played a big role in destroying the church of Jerusalem. Because when you collaborate with the false prophet, then what are you doing? What are you doing? You, you are a leader of a nation. You are leading a nation. And then you take hand or you shake hand with false prophets or false pastors and teachers. What are you doing? That means... You are against who? You are against God. I wish leaders would know this, but they cannot know. Because you are the leader, and yet you, should, you shake hand with the false teachers and pastors, those who can praise you. So what are you doing? It's that outright shows that you are against who? Against God, because you are promoting idolatry you are promoting antichrist that's the side you are because when you and when you side yourself with those people who are lying at a nation then you are against god what are you supposed to do as a leader you are supposed to make sure that you put up laws whereby though you might not you are a leader of each and every person but you promote the law in, 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 in accordance with the will of God don't side with anybody no matter who you must seek to understand the word of God any false prophet you are not supposed to side with him that's how a leader should be. But the moment you side with the false prophet, you are against God. And when you, you are against God, God is against you. So, where are you going? So, that's what happened with Zedekiah. Zedekiah colluded with the false prophet. That's why they were planning to, they wanted to kill Jeremiah. Yeah. That's why even Jeremiah, when, when Zedekiah is going to Jeremiah, Jeremiah is, is begging him. If I tell you the truth, are you going to kill me? Because that's what they, they had planned. And he, in fact, Kisoma kuna pali yasema, anawambi ata mukienda museme, prisons wakija, useme tulikuwa na wewe. Because they had planned to kill him. Huh? Again, what was the problem with this king, or with the kings in the nation of Israel? They trusted to and said for Egyptians to help him. Let us read Jeremiah 37 7. Maybe you can, you can understand it better. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel 
Thus shall ye say to the king of Judah that sent you unto me to inquire of me. Behold, Pharaoh's army, which is come for forth to, to help you, shall return to Egypt into their own land. You see, so these people, they, had, they asked help from Egyptians. Why? Was it wrong to ask for help? Or should we not ask for help from foreign countries? Yes, but if you remember, these people, the children of Israel, were taken by God from where? From Egypt. So Egypt, they would not have gone back to ask help for and from Egypt. When you go to a deeper spiritual understanding, this means Egypt stands for carnal reasoning. Carnal reasoning. You, you, are, you are a church of God. You need the wisdom of God. But instead of seeking the wisdom of God, you go to ask help to natural reasoning. The wisdom of this world. So that means as a leader you should seek always to be guided by the word of God in order for in order of God to help you not a word of God as is interpreted by men but as it is interpreted by the prophets of God so why was he going to seek help in Egypt? It is because he would not hearken to God's counsel, to the true prophet, to those who advised him well. He, he could not, you know, you know, what does that mean? It means this way. When you go to ask help from foreign countries, those people that you, you, are, you, you are going to ask help from them, maybe they are prosperous nation. They have things that you admire. Why are they prosperous? Why are they better than you? Why are they better than you? No, people don't ask themselves. Many African countries, they want to go to America. They want to go, they feel that we should go to America. That's why they are, they are greener pastures. Why are they green pastures? Are they not in this world? Yeah. What, has, what, have we, Jan, what have we done? Why have we failed to be like them? We always say that those people, they started in many years. No, they started somewhere. What was their guidance? If you read some of these countries, if you go to their laws, you'll find that most of these people whom we see they are prosperous, they are very yani, they are very good at their at their governance, very careful at their governance. Even to the point that those countries, because of a good governance, they have a blessing. They have what we admire now. So instead of a leader working to to lift up his country in a good governance, you want to go to seek help from those who have governed their country well. That's why some leaders fail. Not some, many, they fail to understand that God is not God of Americans only. He's not God of Europe only. He is not God of any other, any other country. He is a God of all nations. And if he can bless a nation, he can also bless your nation. He can bless it. Yeah, he can bless it. There is no limit. The limit is who? You. So a leader should not seek help from Egypt. He's, he's supposed to seek help from God. And when we say from God, it means he, would, he was supposed to seek wisdom. Because when you lead a country with wisdom, 
That means you seek wisdom of God, then God is going to make that country to be prosperous. Things are going to, God is going to open chances for you. But you can see Zedekiah here, instead of seeking counsel from God, he decided to go to Egypt. That is one mistake he made. So, fourthly, he hated, imprisoned, and persecuted the prophets. That one you can read is in, in, in Second Chronicle, that six sixteen. Fifthly, he was unjust and cruel. He was unjust and cruel. He could just send anybody unto prison, just, the, just as he wills. So a leader, when he has power, and he used that power unwisely, that we call, when a leader has a sword, that sword he is given by God, but the same sword can cut his throat. He can cut himself. He can slaughter himself. That's what the leader doesn't know. You have a sword, but this sword, when you are given by God, that sword, it is to work with God for the goodness of a people. But if you don't use that sword in the right way, the same sword can be against you. And it can be very terrible. So you can see, we have also an example with Rehoboam. Rehoboam was the son of Solomon. You all know that. Solomon was a, was a son of who? David. And David gave his kingdom and Solomon. And when he gave that, his kingdom at Solomon, what happened? Solomon, after he died, his kingdom was to divide. He left his kingdom unto his son Rehoboam. Rehoboam. But Rehoboam had a problem. Because when Rehoboam, and when Solomon died, Solomon had put that country, had oppressed people with taxations. That's what Solomon had done. Because Solomon decided even to marry many wives from foreign countries. By serving them, he was forced to raise taxes so that he can have money to service his expensive uh, pomps. So when his son, Rehoboam came in, when Solomon died, Rehoboam went to seek counsel from the elders of that nation. You know what these elders told him? They told Rehoboam, if you want to, to be a leader in this nation, you go, you, are, you revise all what you have, you are, your father has done. He has oppressed the people, they are oppressed. Make sure you reduce taxes. Give these people uh, a hope of life. When Rehoboam heard that, when these people tell, told Rehoboam, your father was, was a time cruel unto people. Rehoboam felt it not good and he went to the young men. That is, those people who are young like him. He sought counsel from them. And they told him, don't hear unto these old men. The best thing you can, you, can, you can do is to add the taxes 
If your father had tax these people, tax them three times more. And Rehoboam, he acted unto these young people. Hey, he, yani Rehoboam, listened unto these young people. So what did he do? He did as these young people had said. And when he did that, the kingdom broke into two. That's how the, yani the nation of Israel broke into two. Rehoboam, people said, no, we are not going to be under you. So Rehoboam was left with the two kingdoms. So, sorry, two tribes, that is uh, Judah and Benjamin, and the general of, of Solomon was left with the ten. You can read that, that story. So you can see, people uh, or leaders don't know that oppressing the people, God is going to be against you. Rehoboam was a, yeah, he could have ruled how many tribes? Twelve. But he lost ten. And he was left with only two. Because of reasoning, not listening at the elders of Israel. He went after the unlearned, the unwise young men who could not tell him the truth. So a leader can be misguided by those who surround him if he lacks the wisdom of God. So you can see when you go to Jeroboam, he, has become, he became a king. He was given ten tribes. That is a part of the church, three quarters of the church. But you can see he also got a will advice. And he, he set up calves. The worship of cars was started by Jeroboam. And this was to restrain the people from the true worship at Jerusalem. He did it. And God sent him a, 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 a dreadful message. If you read at uh, a, a message by Ahijah, if you read at uh, 1 Kings 14, 6, you'll see. I don't, want to, I don't want us to read it now. But if you go and read it, 1 Kings of the, the first thing, chapter 16, you will see what happened with the Jeroboam. He got a little advice. He even changed the place of worship from Jerusalem to, to Bethel. So you can see all these, leader, these leaders, what happened. Another king is Ahaz. Ahaz was a weak and the worst of his afflictions. But God had a sad day for him when he lost 120,000 valiant men in one day and he had 200,000 women carried captive. If you can read that, you'll get it in Second Chronicle chapter 28. You can see it. So those are kings who, who, yeah, who made mistakes. We have also Asa, who was a good king, yet he branded with trusting in a number of flesh. If you can read it in 2 Chronicles 16 7, with the oppression of some of the people, Utayona in verse 10. So if you read unto these people, how, yani, unto a people, how the kings behaved in church history or, or in history of the world, you will see. So, wheresoever is a generality of sinning, there shall be a generality of suffering. The king shall mourn and the prince shall be closed with the desolation and the heart of the people of that land shall be troubled. We have seen it. So you can see that these people, the whole nation was rebellious. The whole nation was rebellious. From the greatest to the least, they were guilty. Ebusoma Jeremiah Ezekiel 2 3 tuone kidogo. Soma? Inasema. Akaniambia, Mwanadamu, 
na kutuma kwa wana wa Israeli kwa mataifa wanaoasi walio niasi mimi wao na baba zao wamekosa juu yangu na hata hivi leo yes and he said that to me son of man that's when god was sending ezekiah and he said that to me son of man i said thee to the children of israel to a rebellious nation that has rebelled against me they and their fathers have transgressed against me even unto this very day so this was a nation which had kings priests princes all sort of people that you can talk about just the same way a nation has it was in these people it was in, in, in that country learned and learned they were there but starting from the king as we have seen they had gone wrong and that's why they were to go to captivity and when we talk of Zedekiah i want you to have imagination that when Zedekiah is his, his house is being exterminated what about the princess what about the those people who are close to Zedekiah leaders who are very near to Zedekiah do you think they went scot free it's only that we are told of Zedekiah that yeah, from the higher we see that even those people who are close to Zedekiah those who are near him those princes who, who are telling Zedekiah to kill Jeremiah maybe no one survived if Zedekiah lost his eyes his wife his children then it means the princess the CSS the senators the leaders of that nation all those people who had who are who are known in eminence they all died they all died so you know when a leader goes wrong that's what, what people don't know if you have the wisdom of god as a man of god the only thing the best thing you can do is to advise that leader in the right direction no matter what because that is the way you'll be you'll be doing the work of god moreover you'll be helping that person but the problem is because these people are in darkness they won't, he won't understand you can see even Zedekiah didn't understand Jeremiah he could not understand him that's why he was planning even to murder him that's a problem with the man of this world but people need to pray because this scripture is written for our learning that even a king can learn that a king can be blind he is a leader of a nation but he can be blind even those people surround him he must know they are not angels there are people who can even mislead him in the name of god he should be very careful otherwise you might be against god and you think you are with god and if you are against god things might be very tough for you because as a leader because you would have happiness in this world because it doesn't mean that if you become a leader you should not be happy you are supposed to be happy when you see people are happy but when you see people are not happy how are you going to be happy hey wezekani you will be tormented na hapo ndio unasikia pale jeremiah anasema yani pale zeke anasema they will be in desolation they will be clothed in desolation nikuo nikusema atakuwa hata akiwa amekaa inside himself he is in desolation he is desolate lakini ni kwa sababu haelewi that desolation yanakaa naye but he would have wearied it out and come out clean because he's a man ni mtu kama watu wengine lakini nobody who doesn't make a mistake but you should come out clean but on, on when it comes to the word of god 
That, that one, we call it repent. And repentance, you must do it sincerely in order for it to, to be accepted by God. That's what leaders don't know. Now, because about who you to now by your leaders, because of this wealth of this world, it is very hard for them to repent. Because of pride, Afadhali, that's the problem with the leaders in this world. Pride is a problem with them. We should know that the Lord observes the ways and works of war. He observes the way and works of all. Whether wicked or righteous, we are all before God or in the eyes of God. He can see us. You cannot, we cannot hide before God. So a leader should know, just like any other person, that what he says, what he do, he is open as an open book before God. So whenever he cheats, whenever he lies to, yani to, to anyone or to a nation, he is not lying to that nation. He is lying unto who? Unto God. Because you, can, and you cannot lie unto God. You know, when you, li when you are lying unto God, the answer is that you are lying unto yourself. Not to a people. You are lying unto yourself. You are becoming your own your, 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 your own enemy. Yeah. That's what the leader should know. You are becoming your own enemy. Otherwise, you are killing yourself. You are destroying yourself. Those lies will burn in you like fire. Because you are lying to yourself. You will never have peace of mind. No matter who you are. And those leaders who are, yani, who, and those people who have been leaders, they know what I'm saying. That is the truth. That is the truth. You lie, and that lie becomes a fire in you. Why? Because anytime you want to talk, you want to hide that, that lie. That lie is coming in front of you all the time. So whenever you want to talk something, you want to hide it. So it is something tormenting you. You are being tormented by that lie. And you don't know. So for you, for a leader, uh, to be off that bait is just to have a true confession. He confesses. So no church no state, no person, but whatever they do comes at a divine cognizance. Their ways and this act are known to the Lord. No, it is each and every person. They are known to the Lord. So when you lie, you don't lie unto God, you lie unto yourself. Because you are judging yourself. You are condemning yourself. Not God. Not even those people whom you are lying unto. You might get some benefit because you might oppress them or corrupt things. But those things, at the end of the day, they are nothing. You'll go out of this world with what you have eaten with your mouth. So, this leader... They break in pieces, God's people, because they don't know that they have, give, they have been given charge of God's heritage and they will answer for it. But they don't know. That's why they, they oppress people. Psalms 94, Psalms 94, 5. It says, they break in pieces 
thy people, O Lord, and afflict thy heritage. Those are the leaders, corrupt leaders. They slay the widow and stranger and murder the fatherless. Seven. Yet they say, the Lord shall not see. Neither shall the God of Jacob regard it. Imagine, that's what they say. Because when a leader is corrupt today and tomorrow, when he do things against, who, against the heritage of God, because a leader, when he's leading a people, he should know that he has been given a heritage to look unto. When you, pro, you, you oppress them, when you hike taxes so that they cannot have their aid needs, like what Rehoboam did in the time of Solomon, what are you doing? And you are doing it maybe because of your own interest. Because there is another way you can do it. If you could be honest to a people, there was a time when it is said, the spirit of a leader is the one who, which control a people. When you are corrupt as a leader, all those who are before, below you are going to be corrupt. No matter what you do, you hide it. That spirit affects those who are below you. And they are going to be corrupted. You can never fight corruption or whatever you do. You cannot oppress people. Even if you talk it and internally you are so, that spirit is going to be taken by all those who are under you. And they will be corrupt. You try to fight it, but you cannot defeat it. Defeat it. You cannot defeat it because it is emanating from you. You are the source. So if you read down that line, verse 7 says, Yet they say, the Lord shall not see, neither shall the Lord and the God of Jacob regard it. You know, it's as if the leaders do things, as if even the God of Jacob, the true God that we worship, does not regard it. Because if they had a feeling that God can regard their sinning or their sins, they would have brushed. Ata wakisikia haya. Lakini, nikana kwamba, they don't care. They assume that God does not regard it. They sin today, tomorrow, with this and that, and even the day after, they will do it more. They don't regard God. And that's why first eight he says, understand you British among the people and you fools, when will you be wise? When will you be wise? He is talking to each and every person, even to the leaders, the kings, presidents, those people who are given, uh, 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 those people who are leading in nations. When will you be wise? Verse 9, he that planted the ear, shall he not hear? He that formed the eye, shall he not see? He that chastised the heathen, shall not he correct? That's what I'm saying. You're because Bible, you are leaders. Yeah. Because you are kings. Because of you are presidents. Do you think you are not going to be corrected? Because you are fools. Because you are fools. You are going to be corrected as much as any the smallest person in a nation. Mutakuwa corrected. Mupende, musipende. Eleven asema, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of man that they are vanity. Mungu anajua that those of man that they are vanity. Vanity ni kusema, they fall of vanity things. Mungu anajua the thoughts of man 
a vanity. Ni kumanisha, yani, ni bure. There's nothing which can come from the thought of man. Hakuna kitu ya maana mbae inaesa toka katika thought of man. Na hapa sasa naogea, to each and every person, even because a king, a leader, a president, whatever, they are men of this world. And their thoughts are vanity. So they need consolations unto God. They need an advice from God. They need to lead from God, not from themselves. If you read Psalms 10, 11, what does it say? It says, he had said in his heart, God hath forgotten. He hides his face. He'll, he'll never see it. That's what those people who are, co who are corrupt in government think. They are corrupt today, tomorrow. But what do they think? He has said in his heart, God has forgotten. He has forgotten that last week, or last year, I corrupted one billion. He has forgotten. Now because he has forgotten, he hides his face. He'll never see it. Hata ona, hata hile kwa sababu alisahau, kwa nina nafikiri alisahau? Ni kwa sababu, yeye alikuwa kama binadamu, amepanga, hata iba hii pesa, anunue shaba fulani, pahari. Anunue ndege, ama anunue hile kitu. Na kwa sababu ameiba pesa na amenunua, kuna kitu mefanyika? Hapana. Kwa hivu nukumanisha, yeye, kwa sababu alinipatia wakati when I wanted to this na nika corrupt, nika iba hii, na nika fanya yale nikuwa nafanya, kwa hivu nukumanisha, mungu amefanya nini? Amesaha? Amesaha. Na kwa sababu amesaha uhiyo, Ata hi ingine, nitafanya nini? Ata hi ingine, nitaipa. Kwa sababu nasema, he hided his face. He'll never see it. Kama hile ingine, haku ona, ni kumanisha. Ata hi, hata fanya nini? Hata ona. That's how, the, how, that's how men are. Wanaona kana kwamba mungu, hile haku ona. Na hata hi, hata hi hata ona. So, he goes on being corrupt and corrupt. And yet, he is a leader. Na kitu meona, Wakati kifika mungu watafanya nini? Wakati wake, ni vile nasema, mungu wamesema, hakuna mtu wanga na pita no, in this world and he is not corrected. Hivu duwe nilu wake nimesema. Atalipa. Atalipa. Let us read, tukimalisia, Job 22, 13. Job 22, 13. And thou sayest, how does God know? Can he judge through the dark cloud? You see, uyo ni mtu wana juliza. How does God know? Kwa nini mtu wana juliza hivyo? Ni kwa sababu, yeye, kama binadamu agejua mungu wana jua. Let us ask ourselves that question. If God had known that we know, that he knows and we fear him tunaweza fanya ki yani kuna mtu angefanya dhambi eh hakuna kwa hivyo sasa hapa nikana kwamba anasema how does how now you yani anasema mungu na mtu anauliza and thou says how does god know can he judge through the dark cloud nikiiba na watu wasinione atajuaje because man fear not be seen by who? By man. But not God. Man fear to be seen by man, but not God. Sasa hapo tuwezikia na sema, can you see in the dark cloud? Manake yeye, hamejificha sana. Na naona, akiwa hamejificha binadamu, Hata mungu hazi fanya nini? Hazi mwona. Ya mejificha mtu. Sasa kwa sababu ya mejificha mtu, huyu mungu ya naeza wana na mnagani. Can he see in the dark cloud? That's why man will seek 
it had in a very big way how he is going to steal and hide himself not to be seen by any man so long as man doesn't see him bas how will god know so hapa sasa tunataka kusema mungu anataka kusema that binadamu ana yani yeye kazi yake ni kuamini as if mungu hayuko na is a big mistake that's why a leader ambaye amewekwa pale wacha mtu huwa kawaida yeye ana corrupt ana oppress na anauliza the same question how can god know how can god know and kabisa yeye anaona that yale anafanya ana corrupt anafanya deals anatengeneza sheria ambayo sina fever yeye in pretext that anatengenezea sheria yani those whom he is leading sasa yeye haja yake tu anataka ajifiche binadamu nyinyi musielewe he comes with a double mouth anaongea hii mnasikia vile anataka lakini ako na ingine ambaye anapanga sasa anauliza Mungu atajuaje because kama bi hawa hawaelewi anaamini ana assume hata Mungu afanye nini haelewi he is mistaken so Mungu atusaidie God help our leaders waweza kujua haya mambo waweza kuyalewa eh ni kwa sababu yeye amesema that he will proceed with the sinners according to their ways and desert atawaadhibu kulingana jia zao wote kuanzia wale wadogo na wale wakubwa kwa hivyo nobody is safe before god we are all under condemnation if we are not going to repent and do in accordance with the will of god may god bless his word amen Amen.